Welcome back to Rare Elvis Photos. We are going to cover who was Elvis' best friend, the series here. Uh, we've covered five, quite a few so far. From Jerry Schilling to Red West uh, to Larry Geller uh, to Billy Smith. Um, and, of course, uh, there are a few more. And uh, this one is going to be about Charlie Hodge. Now, Elvis Presley uh, met Charlie Hodge in 1956 when he was singing with the Foggy, uh, Foggy River Boys, I think it was. Um, he originally was in a, uh, in a group with Bill Gaither, the singer. You know, he was a singer, uh, and uh, Elvis Presley really liked that. He actually caught his show early on in his career. And the next time he saw him was in the Army uh, in '58. And they actually spent quite a bit of time together in the army, even though they weren't stationed in the same unit. Uh, Charlie's one of the, uh, the the group that went to Paris with Elvis Presley, and he also sang "I Will Be Home Again" um, on his uh, April third, nineteen sixty session. And of course, you can see Charlie on stage with Elvis Presley through all the concerts, handing him scarves. You know, he was there on the uh, Unchained Melody uh, as well, holding a microphone. Charlie was very uh, integral to Elvis Presley, and he lived at Graceland for 18 years. Um, now, Charlie liked to drink and kind of became a bit of an alcoholic um, throughout those years. And there's a story that Billy Smith told about Elvis was giving somebody a new car, and, and, and uh, Charlie was drunk. And he kept saying, I'm going to get me a Rolls Royce, and over and over again. And Elvis was like, you know, you're ruining my moment. You're ruining this moment. And uh, he backhanded Charlie. This was like the last couple months of Elvis's life, maybe even one of the last, maybe the last month of Elvis's life. Uh, but you know, they were they were very close. Uh, and um, and of course, the very next day, Elvis bought him a Cadillac because he realized that he had actually not bought Charlie a car, and he bought everybody else a car. Um, not that Charlie was there for the money, um, but you know, Elvis Presley liked to show his generosity as well as to say, "I'm sorry." Um, you know, when he did mess up, he didn't really say the words, I'm sorry, but he would give him a car or a house or something. Charlie was never known to say anything negative about Elvis Presley. And even later in life, he was asked, you know, why he didn't stop Elvis from, you know, abusing prescription drugs. And, you know, his answer was kind of in, a, in the form of a joke about Elvis being a boss. And you don't tell your boss not to do something or you'll be gone. Well, a lot of people made the comment that, well, if, if I was there, I would have gone up and I'd say, now, just listen to me. No, you wouldn't. Now, you think about your boss. How often do you go up to your boss and say, hey, listen to me? <laughs> One time. <laughs> so clearly, Charlie saw Elvis not only as a friend, but as a boss. And I think that his, the dynamic of his relationship changed, uh, certainly from the earlier years until uh, when he moved in Graceland and lived there. Uh, you know, and became the stage manager. So the dynamic that Charlie presents there is that Elvis Presley was his boss. So, you know, I don't know if you can make the argument that Elvis and Charlie were best friends. Uh, Jerry Schilling certainly said things to Elvis, and so did Red West and Sonny West, uh, that they were displeased with uh, maybe something Elvis did or said. Uh, but Charlie seems like he never did. Does that make him a villain? Does that make him his best friend? Does that make him neither? Um, like I said, that's for you to decide. I'm going to go ahead and end with a fun little footage clip of Elvis and Charlie kicking each other in the butt on stage. 